Whether you're a budding student, a fresh designer, or a seasoned architect or interior designer, you are in the right place to master the digital drawing workflow. This episode is the first of the three-part workshop where I'll show you the ins and outs of Morfolio Trace app from home design to rendering and landscape applications. I'll demonstrate how I create captivating illustrations for my client using this tool. I'm here to show you how to go digital without losing the essence of hand drawing. Mastering these skills means you can work freely on chain from the traditional setup of a computer, printer, scanner, and bag of pen, pencils, and rulers. I was once a staunch advocate for traditional tools like pen, markers, and trace paper, but the struggle of scanning, fixing, saving, and renaming, and exporting my sketch started to take a toll on my creativity. That's why I began experimenting with a digital drawing in 2017. And after a series of trials, I found my perfect match in the iPad and Apple Pencil. I've managed to do more than just doodle on my iPad. I've created precise floor plans for client presentations from concept to completion. We'll delve into the five transformational workflows and how Morfolio Trace has revolutionized my design process. Let's dive in. One of the best thing about working with Morfolio is a scale workflow. And I'll show you in this example. So here we have a really big house, about 20,000 square feet. And this is one of the two floors of this house. So if we load this thing in Morfolio Trace as a PDF, what we can do first is using one of the existing measurements to calibrate this drawing. So we're calibrating it as if we were working in AutoCAD. So we can be drawing in one to one scale. And this is very similar to the idea of if you're familiar with Blue Bean Graph, you first have to calibrate the scale in the drawing so you can begin taking dimensions. If I know one end to the other end of the building is about 65 square feet and you know zero inches, we can be very precise with that or just a rough estimate. The first thing we're going to do is we want to set the scale, this paper scale, to this known dimension. So I'm just going to drag the two ends of this dimension tool right here. We're going to say this measurement is 65 and zero inches. So after we do this, what this is going to do is this is going to calibrate the drawing based on this measurement. And the small tip is, you know, the longer your measurement is, the more accurate and precise you can be when you actually you know, take the ruler out and measure this as opposed to using the, the width of the hallway as the base of your calibration. So that wouldn't be as accurate as opposed to taking, you know, the one end of the building to the other end of the building. So now that we know this drawing is calibrated, what we can also do to verify is we can take our ruler and we'll just enable that. If I rotate the drawing around 90 degrees, what we can measure here is from one end to the other end, you'll see I have 65 square feet. So I'll quickly demonstrate how I've used this in the different layer trace options that I've generated for this project. So I'll just cycle through very quickly. You can see from layer by layer, this is very much like working with a physical trace paper. You can build layers on top of each other. And the more layers you add on to it, the less transparency of the layer you're going to see below. But you can also just turn off the layer below that to get more, um, to have more legibility. So this will be one area of the house in the kitchen where I was working. So another area of this house will be this master bedroom where we're doing some working. So that in here, you can also see that I have a couple more layers that I can turn on to review option one, option two, and option three. And that's very typical of my own workflow is to have multiple options for, for some of the similar ideas or just very different ideas. But it is really as easy as I've shown you here is pulling up this ruler. Once the drawing is calibrated to scale, you can begin drawing and you can be using this ruler at a different angle. You can twist it around and you will be drawing to scale at a one-to-one -one ratio. So here is another example of where you might want to use a super scale ruler to assist you in an interior elevation design. So I'm going to turn this off and you'll see that as the base layer imported from AutoCAD as a basis of our design. You could think of this as a physically printed out paper and they're just laying it over with a trace paper. So here our scale is a half an inch to a foot and I've used this nine foot and three inch as the basis to calibrate this drawing. And once I do that, your scale ruler, when you pull this up, you can quickly verify that this is about nine foot and three inches right here. If I zoom in a little bit more, you'll see that a little bit more clearly. So I know this is gonna be very accurate and I can begin drawing to scale at, you know, as close as an inch or even a quarter of an inch. So I just wanna show you very quickly, if I turn on this layer, you can see there's some quick doodles. And if I turn on this layer, this is more of the finished design at this point in the project where I can quickly use this kind of drawing and load it into my let's say InDesign or a presentation file and this would be enough material and design information to show the client where the design is taking. So the idea of working with a physical paper with a trace paper laid on top and design on the iPad is just very, very similar. So here I want to show you one last example of where the scale might be very helpful in construction site visit or a CA. So here I've actually made myself a eight and a half by 11 size 
paper and I can be importing this into my folder trace anytime I go on a site. This particular drawing is at a scale of three inch to a foot. So you can see that I can begin doing these kind of drawings that are to scale. And there's also a really cool function where you can actually enable the grid for the paper to have a certain unit assigned to it. So I think this grid option is actually an inch apart for each of the squares. So you can actually begin counting as a basis for your drawing. Let's say you are primarily using your iPad for construction site visit, CA, annotation, redline. This is a good example of that. So you can easily import your PDF as a set and you can view this with this multi-page view. So what I would do personally is I have my iPad and my Dropbox automatically synced for offline use. Just in case there isn't Wi-Fi or isn't LTE, if I'm walking through the site and I have a, a plan view like this loaded up on my iPad and this is already calibrated using the scale function. So what I can do is just really begin walking around the building and I can be making these very detailed annotations and I can zoom in, zoom out to get it as detailed as possible. And if I do make a mistake drawing something that I you know, shouldn't have, I can very quickly take my eraser tool and erase the part and just redraw. I imagine that's going to be very hard to do if you were actually carrying out a half size drawing set and you're walking around with a red pen. I've done that in the, in the past. It's just not a very effective way to be annotating because there could be mistakes, there could be errors that you wanted to white out and erase. What I personally found to be very helpful is when you're going on job site on different dates, you can actually just create a new layer and you can name that layer or write in physically, writing on that layer the date of that job site visit. That can help you or remind you when you do go back home and you're looking through your notes, you're trying to decipher where are some of these notes made. And here's another example of that in action is let's say you're walking around the site and you're looking at the RCPs in the receptacle this is very typical in San Francisco where we're working with existing building and oftentimes we need to move the fixtures a foot or two foot around. So having this drawing calibrated to scale allows you to reflect these changes very accurately on the drawing. So you can actually be sending out this sketch along with, let's say, a written memo. Another area where this can be very effective is in your construction drawings. And we will often have these cabinet drawings of the enlarged floor plan at a half size scale. Let's say the client makes a decision about something that, you know, that we did not anticipate for. And in this case, they wanted to add in some oven and move the fridge over. So if this is drawn to scale, we can quickly sketch this over in red and we can quickly cloud this, give it a date, send it to, let's say the cabinet maker, instead of making these changes ourselves internally, I think this can be a very effective way and a very quick way to capture these changes without the need Need to generate a proper sketch ourselves, and this will save us a lot of time in return. The third example of this I want to show you is related to landscape and urban design. And while I don't do a lot of this in my personal work, I, I think some of this it's going to be very applicable to what you might use it for. So here I actually have the floor plan and landscape plan combined into one drawing. So you can use it for both the floor plan and landscape plan. So I wanna show you how this is done very quickly so you can get a sense of what you might wanna use it for too. So if you're an architect, what you might be working on is sort of this floor plan view. So you can see that this floor plan view, if I click on this window, that it will zoom out just to the extent of the floor plan. But if you're a landscape architect or a designer, what you might be more involved is a landscape part of the floor. So by tapping on this view, I can zoom out to a much greater extent where I can see some of the larger, higher level design as related to topography, landscape, and even sun and wind movement. And this is very easy to set up once you understand the kind of workflow that this involves. So let's imagine we are starting with a blank canvas, but this canvas will actually have the as-built floor plan of the building. And this is actually one of the two floor plans in the building. And on top of this building, what I have here is actually, if I were to make this a little bit more opaque, you'll see that this is actually a site survey of the property. And uh, what I used this for was to get a contour lines for the drawing in as the basis for the design. So I'm gonna bring back the opacity and uh, overlays on top of the original floor plans that you'll see down here. So if you're an architect, you're probably more interested in designing in this view, in this floor plan. So you see that the drawing is actually built layers over layers. So once the floor plan is, is done, you can actually use this in the presentation. But if you also wanted to add in the site information, let's say if I actually went to this layer and I wanted the canvas to be more zoomed out so we can show the trees around the property, I can show the sun movement, the, the, the wind movement, and the, some of the textures for the ground. And I can show this information on these different layers so that you can be working in both views in one project. And once I add in the coloring, and this is going to really highlight the project and present it in such a way where it's very diagrammatic. So once I actually am zoomed out to this point in the project, you can see that there's a lot of information where at this 
level, the plan, the landscape level, I have information about the landscape, the contours, the textures. But if I also wanted to just export at the floor plan level where it's a little bit zoomed in, I can click on a floor plan view and I can export just a closer zoomed in view of the floor plan. And you can see you can be very detailed about this or you can be a little bit more conceptual. That's up to you. But the idea is that within one single canvas, you can have these two different views or even multiple views that talks about the different level of information. Okay, number four is a real time sketching with a 3D model that's imported into your Morphlow Trace. You're going to see that this drawing is already completed, but I want to show you the cool thing behind this workflow is the ability to import in a SketchUp model. This model can come in as a clay model. And this really is super powerful because you can not only just take a point of view, you can also go into your ortho, you can also go into your 2D or different level of perspective. And they have controls for understanding how and when the sun is moving. You can be setting your north. You can be very specific about your geographic location. But what, what's really important to understand with this model is that you can take any of the views and you can save the views to be sketching on top. And this is particularly useful if you are conceptualizing or brainstorming. So I am actually going to maybe just click this view, for example, and this is going to set the view at this point of view. And this is just one of the four views I currently have. So depending on where you choose and save the view, we can tap on back this view that I already finished with a drawing over. So let's say this is the view that we have saved from the 3D model view. And what I can do is take this view and uh, begin to draw over this with my line drawing. And I would do this with the same process as I would in, in procreate and whatnot and be adding information for people, trees, vegetation. And I can be adding some very simple coloring that brings out the architecture and at the same time really gives the trees and the skies around it some context. So this is going to be the final version that I'll send to a client for review. And this is really not about materiality study. You could have multiple views like this that are generated from the 3D model. And the last one I want to share with you is the sharing and the collaboration feature and workflow. So when you are ready to export your drawings or even drawing sets, what you can do very easily is with this button right here. And this is going to pull up the share button. So you can either pick your PDF or image. I'm going to go ahead and pick the best resolution to share this. And in this tab, what we're going to do is we are going to tell Morfolio Trace to select a paper size and the scale that we want to export this to. So you can really see that I have this currently selected at 12 by 18 inch paper. So I could easily go up to 24 by 36 inch and at a 16 inch scale, you will see this, this would take up about that much room on the paper. So what I can try is instead of the 16 inch scale, what I can try is maybe do an eighth and see if that will fill up that paper size in a way where we want it. So that looks actually about right. So on the arc D size paper at an eighth inch scale, I would be able to capture most of my drawing in this one particular view. I'm just gonna turn off the drawing, the layer below it, so I don't export this. And what I'm gonna do here right now is just to export that as a PDF. And this is going to drop into our InDesign. You can save this either as an AirDrop to your Mac, or you can upload it to Google Drive, iCloud, or Dropbox. And if you are in this floor plan view, what I can also do is I can turn Turn off all my site drawings and I can export just the buildings that are inside this view. So if this is a clean version of the floor plan that you want to export in, you can do the same thing with a PDF. And in here, you can also see that at 24 by 36 inch size at a quarter inch, this is how big the building is going to take up. So that would be an example of a single page export. If you have loaded in a actual PDF with multiple pages, for example, in this view, I've actually deleted a bunch of pages where I'm not using it to demonstrate. But imagine this is your drawing set and you have about 30 to 40 pages of drawings. And these are the pages that you have. If you want to export this entire PDF as a set, it's also really easy to do is instead from the single view, we're going to go to this multi page view, and we're going to export this entire multi page export. That's what it's called. And we're going to share that as a PDF. So you can be exporting your entire red line to your computer or cloud or Dropbox and share it with someone that needs this information. And now there's one last little tip I want to show you. And it's very effective if you're working with a landscape architect. So if you're just working inside the building, and then somebody else is doing the site plan, the, the contour line, the survey, those kind of information can all be done on a separate, let's say an iPad that someone is drawing in. If we receive a landscape plan from somebody else, and let's imagine that what we're going to open this, this is going to be that file that we received from the landscape architect. And if we look at the scale, we know this is already calibrated to scale, the same scale as our floor plan. What we're going to do here is we're just going to copy this layer over to our floor plan. So let's open up this floor plan view. Again, we can see the landscape plan is actually 
on the clipboard. And if we clip and paste, this will actually land in the same place at the same scale as our floor plan. So this can be a very effective way to be collaborating and working with somebody else. And because this floor plan came in as a under a normal blending mode, we're just gonna put this on multiply. And that blending mode is going to show the floor plan below it. And with this information, you can export it as a JPEG or a PDF into a presentation set. In the next video, I'm going to cover a real case study project, and I'll show you how I've used Portfolio Trace to work on a 20,000 square foot mega mansion. It's one thing to know how all the features in Portfolio Trace work, but another thing to put it into practice. And I think many of you are going to find this video helpful. But right now, I want to know a little bit more about you. What does a digital workflow mean for your needs? Please scroll down below this video and tell me in the comment section.